What's going on guys, Nico here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the fastest and easiest way to create unique jazzy chord progressions that sound like this. Now by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to use the one tool whenever it comes to creating unique chord progressions known as the chord lineup. So make sure you guys watch this video through, from the beginning to the end. Don't skip around because you may miss out on something that's very important. So with that being said, let's get to work. Wanted to quickly mention that I'm giving away a free piano lesson. So if you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for absolutely free, comment down below piano mastery and I'll be selecting a winner every Friday. Additionally, I'm giving away a lot of free MIDI packs down below in the description for different artists like the Avicii chord progression pack, the Sagala, the Elenium, and many more to come. So check that out if you are a music producer. So with that being said, let's jump to the piano and get started on how we're gonna create the seventh chord progression. All right, so the chord lineup with a jazz tone to it. Now, there are seven chord, seven notes in the key of C. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And if you label each one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, each one of these has its own unique chord that we play. So the way it's traditionally done in the major scale is as follows. So we have the first chord is a major chord, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C. And I have another video that really breaks down why this is the way it was done. And for some of you out there saying, well, what about the minor scale? All I want you guys to do in, in reality, I have another video that talks about the difference between the truth of major and minor. This just repeats all the way up and down the entire piano. There's really no difference between a major and minor scale, unless you're in one of those complicated minor scales that some deep music theorists go into. But for all intents and purposes, we are just following this chord lineup. And in other videos I talk about how you take the chord lineup and make chord progressions really quickly. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna jazzify the entire chord lineup. So we're gonna go chord by chord and show you the exact chord you should use in order to jazzify your song. Now, the C major chord. The C major seventh chord sounds great and we create this using the three, two, three strategy. Now, is there another chord type that we could actually use in this situation? And there actually is. So what we can do instead is we can play a C, uh, C6 chord. And this creates that really jazzy sound to it, right? So all we're doing is we're using the three, two, one strategy to create our sixth chord. And I have another video specifically just on six chords by themselves. Now going from there, we can, oh, that's pretty cool, Nico. We have our C, we can either use two of these chords, right? So if we have a C major chord and you guys wanna jazzify your song, you can either add the sixth or the seventh. And this could be, let's say for example, you're in the key of E flat. You may not know what that is, but if you're in another key, the chord strategy still apply. So we can use the three, you know, three, two, one right here. Or we can use the three, two, three. Both of them work. Now I've actually become a really big fan recently of the C six chord because sometimes you get too many seventh chords back to back. It could sound a bit much. Now we keep going. We go on to our, our second note, which is gonna be the D minor. And here what we can do is we can add our seventh. So D minor sevenths are always good. Any minor chord, the seventh, for the most part, is always gonna sound good. It's just the way it sounds, right? Now that sounds kind of like, uh, well, I'm gonna get into what that sounds in a little bit. For jazzification purposes, the D minor seventh is good. We move on to our next note, the third chord, the third note in the, this key of uh, C major. We have the two, three, two strategy, and we have a minor chord, right? It's pretty simple and straightforward. We keep going now. Now we have the F chord, which is a major chord, and I like the F major seventh. We use that three, two, three strategy. Now there's one alternative here. You could either use the seventh, or you can use an F major sixth chord. So 
So these work. Now we keep on moving and we get to our G chord. So we have our fifth chord, which is a G major chord in the key of C. What can we do from here? Well, there are a couple options. The first one is when we use the 3-2-3 strategy, what ends up happening is we actually hit a, chord, a note outside of the key of C, which is an F sharp or a, a, a G flat. But the issue is that this probably won't sound good unless you really know your theory and know how to use this stuff. So what I suggest instead is just play a G sixth chord. And as we keep on going up, we go to A, it's gonna be an A minor seventh chord. Like I said, the minor chord, just add the seventh, it will sound good. And then our last one here is our diminished chord. And the one suggestion I do have, it's not really jazzification. It, it sounds a little bit like jazzification. If we use the one, two, one, two, uh, the two, two, three strategy. So what I did, it was really quick and maybe a bit fast, was I took our chord lineup and I just walked it down playing different jazz chords. Now there is actually one chord that I forgot to mention that I really do like. And when we go to our third here, our E minor, it's an E minor sixth. Now this is the part where it gets a little bit mind, you know, mind blowing when we start octave jumping and using inversions. If you don't know what that is, all good, I'm gonna clarify right now. If we have this C major chord here, what we can do is we can actually take the lowest note and jump it up an octave to create inversions of these major and minor seventh or sixth chords. So if I take my C and jump it up an octave, it sounds pretty cool. And what I can do from there is I can take my E and jump it up an octave. And then I can take my G and jump that up an octave. And it really takes some experimentation to figure out what chords actually sound good. But now if you think about it in your brain, the possibilities are truly endless. I gave you, you know, each chord lineup, what to do, and then toss in inversions, which I, you know, I like to refer to as taking the lowest note and jumping it up an octave. Cause that just simplifies things from thinking like, you know, in music theory, there's some weird abbreviations for these inversions. I don't like that. I just like thinking, all right, we know the four notes. What's the lowest note? We have the C here, we octave jump it. So what this creates is it creates either the first inversion of the C major seventh, or it's an E minor sixth chord, right? And that can get a little bit confusing because you start throwing these out there. But what I'm trying to show you guys is that there's a lot of opportunity for you to just go crazy with these. Now, again, the first chords that I walked through, those are the fundamental ones that you should use when creating your jazzy chord progressions. There could be some other ones that you discover along the way and feel free to let me know if you do and I'll share them with the channel. But those are the ones I highly suggest. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a chord progression and we're gonna jazzify it up. So one chord progression that I like is gonna be in just a simple A minor, F, C, and G. Now in other videos, I show you how to beautify them to sound like this. But in this lesson, we're gonna jazzify them. So here we go, we have our a minor chord, and what I can do here is I can play an A minor 7th, like I said. Then from there I have an F chord, that's the next chord in the scale, so I'm gonna just play an F minor 7th, or F major 7th, excuse me. From there I have a C chord, and I told you I really like the C6, so I've been playing that a lot lately in my music. And then we have a G chord, so what I want to do here with this G chord is play a G6. Now, once you get more intuitive with these and you start knowing the inversions off the back of your head and you practice through more and more of these, what happens is mm, the A minor set, the the A minor six sounds okay, but I'll stick to the seventh and I go. I play an F major sixth instead of the F major seventh. I play an F major sixth, and then I go. I'm just messing around a bit now. And I'm not trying to confuse you guys, but what I'm trying to show you is that, let's say for example, you take the C, the C uh, seventh chord here. 
you jump the C up an octave, we now have an E, uh, an E minor six. Also, you know, our C chord in its first inversion. If I take this uh, E and jump it up an octave, now I have this unique chord. So instead of playing the G6, I play that inversion kind and, and drop this D to a C. So the substitution here is truly endless that you can be doing in this chord lineup, but I showed you, we took a basic chord progression and we jazzified it. So what we did was we added this here. And you throw octaves in with this, hopefully you can see the whole screen, it'll show up. Right, and you can make some really cool sounds with these and some drop pianos and everything else like that. So with that being said, you now have the chord lineup. I went through each note, went through its chord, went through the constructions. If you guys want all of the strategies, by the way, you can download the Piano Cheat Codes PDF in the description. Everything is covered in there. And with that being said, that is our lesson for today. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please go down below, comment, like, subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you are always alerted of the videos that I am making. And I love doing this guys, so also let me know what else you wanna learn in the comments. I'm always making videos, I'm always trying to find new things to learn to show you guys. And again, if you guys wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one and sign up for the free piano lesson, just comment down below Piano Mastery. Every week I pick one winner from the comment section and we can go more in depth on this or whatever you're trying to learn in terms of songwriting, production, whatever it is. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.